Okay, and we are, uh, we're going to go over our first lecture. And so um, the last thing that we did was we cloned our, our repository. And if you go into your repository, you could see uh, Muroc HTML 4th edition, slides, and then chapter 2. So I'm going to go that, through that again. So there's a folder for Muroc HTML 4th edition, slides, chapter 2. So you can open up the slideshow this way. Um... And this is going to be what we're going over. Now, I, I did just realize we left off the last piece here, install node and configure linting set, uh, settings. So real quick, you might have already followed through, but let's go ahead and download this. In fact, does it say LTS or does it say current? It says current. So let's download current. And install. Default settings. All right, while that's installing, read ahead, right click in your local repository in an empty area and click Git Bash here. Gonna open up a terminal window. So if I go back to the root of my directory here, right? This is the repo that I cloned. Okay, I'm gonna right click and click on git bash here. In the terminal, type the command npm install and hit enter. npm space, install, enter. I might need to close Visual Studio if this is hanging. In fact, I'm going to... I'm going to close it anyways. Okay. Once the cursor starts blinking in the terminal, you finished. I'm going to read the added for audited packages, vulnerabilities. Okay, we should be good to go. Okay, that's the end of that. So, again, back to the PowerPoints. Now that we've finished the installation document. Slides, Chapter 2 Revised. And so we're going to get into the first HTML lecture. Um, uh, going through this PowerPoint. And so uh, one last thing before we get into that, let's take a look at the syllabus and see if what else is on the slate for today. <clears throat> um, so literally we are here. Um, We've completed this, uh, completing uh, your environment, setting up your environment. And then uh, today I'm going to open up what I'll call homework after this. And so complete chapter two homework handout. And if I get done before 2.30, um, you know, uh, then we can just all, you know, work. It'll be, uh, call it homework, but it'll just be classwork. Um for chapter two. So uh, chapter two, the title, how to code, test, and validate a web page. And so, you know, there's some objectives here as far as uh, what is the purpose of the head and body elements in an HTML document, describe the types of HTML tags, uh, attributes, uh, white space, comments in HTML. We're going to actually introduce CSS as well. So we're going to introduce both uh, languages today, HTML and CSS. 
um, the types of CSS selectors, and then validating your code for errors. And so, you know, if you come from the from a prior coding class, you you would typically uh, compile your code. And when you compile your code in a language like C Sharp, you're checking it for errors. And so in HTML and in CSS, it's not called compiling, it's called validating. And so we validate our code to make sure that it's free of, uh, from various common kinds of errors. And there, there are some benefits of validating our files. And so um, when we look at an HTML document, and I kind of coded this up earlier, um, there is a bare bones uh, structure. And so all web pages, okay, and I just go to node.js. So this is a website, obviously, and um, this website was built with HTML. All websites are built with HTML. In fact, I can kind of come in here and I can inspect and I see some of these tags. You know, I see the doc type HTML tag there. It's kind of grayed out. And you're going to have to kind of look closely. I see an HTML tag. I see a head tag. I see a body tag and a closing HTML tag. So this language, HTML, you know, is a foundational language of building a website. And um, to write HTML, you write what are called tags. And uh, tags look like this. Um, and so uh, let's kind of go back into uh, my repo and, and I'm just going to type some some code here as as I go through this. I really like to do code demonstrations uh, in any of my lectures. And so as I am going through this and on this one, um, it's not like you need to see my face, but in future ones, you'll see my face uh, on these on these uh, live streams, if you will. Um, you can kind of take a look at this folder structure inside of all of these. So for example, if you go in the homework folder, you see it HTML chapter two homework. So, you know, for example, on the syllabus, it says that we're going to do some chapter two homework, uh, you know, next. And so I'm just going to go inside this chapter two folder. So I'm going to go inside homework and then chapter two, I'm right click this and open with visual studio code. Okay. That's going to open that folder and you can say, yes, I trust the authors that opens this folder and there's a basically a, a dummy file here. Okay, and this dummy file is HTML and I'm just gonna delete what's there. Now the first thing to notice here, your, your file name is index. Uh, index is a very common homepage name. And so if you wanna have a homepage for your site, it's very commonly called index.html, in fact, if I go back to node.js, you you actually don't see the file name because for security purposes, they don't show it. But a lot of, a lot of sites are either index.html or index.htm. And that's kind of like the default um, page um, in many cases. Now it's even better. Okay, you'll notice, look, I typed in index.html and this is the page that came up. So, so that was a perfect example of they kind of hide the file name and file extension on us. And when you just go to this website, the, here it is. But if I load index.html, you get the same page. Um, so again, very common convention for your homepage to be named index. Um, it's also pretty common to have the file extension of .html. Um, and so this is just a common homepage. Now, this first slide, kind of going back to here, I want to make sure you guys can see. Okay, I'm recording. Okay. Um, you know, when you have like the anatomy of a person, it all starts with the bones, right? You got the muscles and the ligaments and the blood and all that other stuff, right? But you start with the bones. And so what we're looking at here is the bones. Uh, of an HTML document. Um, these are tags that are worth uh, kind of memorizing um, and just being familiar with. 
you know, um, this first tag is the doc type. Uh, obviously, that's what it says. But what is the doc type? And we'll start by typing this out. And wow, Visual Studio was pretty smart. Uh, as soon as I typed that first angle bracket, it, it suggested a doc type for me. And if I click it, it even puts in the doc type. Now, doc type is a very unique tag um, because most other tags, again, these are called tags. I, before I jump ahead of myself, tags have angle brackets. So that's a less than angle bracket and a greater than angle bracket. Okay, and most tags have opening and closing. If I kind of look at this HTML, you see where my mouse is, that's the HTML tag. There's also a closing HTML tag. Okay, most tags have both opening and closing, um, but there are some very unique tags like Doctype that are just a standalone tag. Okay, and you know, so this is a unique tag that's a standalone tag. And, and this is what it does, okay? So if I kind of go here, I can put in an HTML comment. This is this is a comment tag, and in Visual Studio it shows up green. And comments are just there for, for the coders to see. They're not really there to be displayed on the web page. But the doc type of HTML declares to the web browser the version uh, five and so uh, HTML5 and so as it turns out HTML has had a lot of versions like everything else in the world right you got the iPhone 1 the iPhone 2 the iPhone 3 the iPhone 4 well HTML had those versions right uh, HTML 1 2 3 and 4 it wasn't until HTML version 4 HTML 4 was really popular in the 90s okay so like historical time reference you got it was actually 4.1 and 4.1 was what everyone used in the 90s. And then the 2000s came around. And, and the next version that became really popular was XHTML. XHTML was the latest version of HTML. They put an X in front of it to be fancy. And uh, it came with a bunch of extra rules. XHTML was supposed to be really strict and it had a lot of rules. It turned out no one really followed those rules, so they kind of abandoned XHTML. And they came out with the next version of HTML5. And that HTML5 really became popular in like 2009, 2010. And so HTML5 has been around for the last decade. And, you know, it's the current standard. And so when you look at line two, this doc type, this tells our web browser. What is our web browser? Well, Google Chrome is a web browser. Uh, Edge is a web browser. Uh, Firefox is a web browser. You know, the web browser's job is to read the HTML and then draw the pretty picture that you see. Uh, so that's called rendering your HTML, right? The, the web browser renders the HTML. It reads it and then draws the picture that we see um, or draws the web page that we see. Um, uh, the doc type basically says this is HTML5. So the web browser knows how to read HTML5. And so it's not reading HTML4. It's not reading XHTML. It's HTML5. Okay. And then we've got this opening and closing tag. Now, again, I did that kind of fast. This is kind of nice. Let me zoom in. View. Oh, let's see. Control plus. Oh, there we go. Can you guys see that better? Yeah. All right. Uh, I have a question about the comments. Yeah. Uh, is it just the same as like a double forward slash in C sharp, just different syntax? Yeah. Yeah. So the syntax for a comment is is different, but it's basically the same idea. Is you're just a lot of times you're putting documentation, like you know you're documenting your code. Um. Now, okay. Off the bat, we've got some some tools that are going to help us write our code. Right off the bat, you might not like that we've got these red squigglies. You know, if this was Microsoft Word, no one likes red squigglies in Microsoft Word. Um, and it says there's basically unneeded white space. So basically, um, I got rid of the white space. Now it says that HTML should have a lang attribute. And so that's HTML. Now this is uh, 
Now it's barking at me because it needs a body attribute. So basically these red squigglies are kind of filling in my template for me. Um, but I want to start, let's not worry about the red squiggly for now because I will explain all of this as we go. Um, if, if what we're looking at is the bones of HTML, um, the, the analogy that I like uh, to use and is real simple and it's almost uh, uh, brings you back to like a grade school analogy, like very, very low level analogy. Uh, the HTML tags are like the, the buns on, on a burger, right? What goes in between the buns? Well, for, for everyone, you know, who eats a burger normally, what goes in between a buns are, uh, you know, the condiments, like the ketchup, the mustard, the lettuce, the tomato, and the burger itself, the meat. Or in 2022, we could also say some people eat veggie burgers. I eat veggie burgers. I'm not hating on that. So let's, let's point is there's really there's condiments and then there's the 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 meat of the burger so if the html tags are the buns well everything goes in between the buns okay so what goes in between the buns is the head tag now what goes in between the head tag again don't worry about the red squigglies for now the head tag uh are for the extras right those are your condiments well your your mustard your tomato etc Right, so these are the extras, and, and what that really translates to in the world of HTML, uh, links to other documents like CSS or um, the title tag. You know, these are things that are are not really core to the page uh, in the sense of they're not really content, but they're they're just extra add-ons that we'll put in between this head tag. Again, opening tag, HTML opening tag, HTML closing tag. Uh, the opening head tag, closing head tag. So Visual Studio is pretty savvy in that if you open a tag, like the body tag, as soon as you put that angle bracket, it's gonna put the closing body tag. Um, so most opening tags have closing tags and the HTML tag, these are our buns. The head tag, these are our extras. We'll get into more specifically examples of that. And the body tag, um, by the way, I'm hitting, I'm holding down control and hitting forward slash, and that's a hot key. That's a hot key for uh, a HTML comment. It's pretty useful. You can even put the cursor on line nine, and if I hold down control forward slash, it'll comment out that entire tag. So that's kind of interesting. The body, this is the meat uh, of the page. Okay, so the extras are just extra things that we add up in the, the, the top section. The body is where the meat of the page. What does that really mean? Well, structure and content. Let's talk about structure. Well, in HTML, as it turns out, um, if you want something to go to the top of the page, there's something called a header tag. If you want something to go to the bottom of the page, there's something called a footer tag. If you want it to be, uh, now by the way, these this header tag by itself does not put something at the top and the footer tag by itself does not put something at the bottom. That would be nice if it did, but unfortunately they're a little bit more coding is required. The idea behind the header tag is that this is code that should be found near the top. And the idea of the footer tag is it's code that should be found near the bottom. So it turns out this body tag, most of most of the code that we're going to write goes in between the body. Okay. And part of that is the structure of the, of the page. And so there are structural tags in HTML, like the header tag. There is a main tag for like your main content. There is a footer tag. In the, in the header, you might find a nav bar, okay? And all of these tags that I just listed, these are all structural tags. And they're just there to build the structure of the page, 
right? Kind of like if you were building a house, you're gonna structure your rooms with two by fours, right? Uh, kind of the same deal. These are structural tags, okay? And it says, hey, this is gonna go at the top, this is gonna go at the bottom, this is gonna be the main content of, of uh, like, uh, in, in this case, like the download links and this heading right here, that might be inside of a main tag. Okay, so that's the structure and content. So when, when I'm talking about content, well, if I go to a web page, and any web page will do, what kind of content do we see on websites? Well, we see we see big headings. Like, I don't know, let's just go to msn.com. Right, just go to a different website. Well, I see like a nav bar up at the top. I see image slideshows. I see just images with links on top of them. I see lots of links to different pages. Um, if I click on a page, you know, a lot of pages have links. Okay, I'm looking at this. This is a heading. Then we see paragraphs. All of these things, images, paragraphs, text, you know, that would all be considered content. And so as it turns out, there's a paragraph tag that you would put, this is a paragraph. This is a paragraph. Well, this is a sentence, this is a sentence, but you get my idea, multiple sentences together. Right, multiple sentences together make a paragraph, right? So you could put paragraphs inside of here. There's an image tag and we'll get into the image tag. But let's let's just rewind back to the slideshow. The doc type is the version, it's HTML5. The HTML tags, everything goes in between the HTML tags. The head tag, these are your extras. Right now, I'm going to give you one extra, the title tag. Do you remember what this does? From before, can someone shout it out? What does the title tag do? Uh, doesn't it, like, put something on the top of the page, top left of the page in, like, bolded letters? I recall. I thought it changed the name in the tab. Yeah, and the tag. Uh, yep. I was wrong. So this is this is what the title tag does. And actually it does a little bit more. We'll get into it uh, more later. But for right now, this is what the title is. So right here it says the highest rated pizza restaurants in St. Louis. Well, that's gonna be in the title tag. Right? I can inspect this. All right. And you're gonna have to have really good eyes to see this. Okay, but if I kind of collapse this, do you see my body tag? Of course you see the body tag. Look at that head tag. Now that's some generated code. You, you should that could look intimidating, but look at this down in the title. You see where my my mouse clicked? Highest rated pizza restaurant in St. Louis. All right? Can you guys all see what I've highlighted there? Yes. And then you see that up in the tab. All right? Kind of a fun little trick. You could say lowest rated, and then that changes what it looks like in the browser. And so it's pretty easy to change. <laughs> uh, that's why you can never trust anything on the internet, right? So if I right click and inspect that title, it says highest rated pizza. I can literally click this lowest rated pizza in St. Louis and change it what this whole, okay, you get the idea. Now, if you refresh the page, that goes away. It doesn't really change the page but that's kind of a fun little tidbit. Okay, um, back to, back to the, the basics here. All right, this is the bare bones. Now, this is barking at me because again, it wants the lang attribute. This is just telling the web browser that we're writing English. Well, it's kind of silly to tell the web browser that because HTML is only in English. Like in Spanish, uh, for any anyone know the Spanish word for head? I believe it's cabeza. Cabeza. There is no cabeza tag. 
Uh, in other words, it's only English. This does not work. Um, so, you know, to me, okay, we, we tell the web browser that it's English, but there's really no other option. It has to be English. Um, this is good to be familiar with. Now, one thing um, I see a lot of people making mistakes because right now all we've put in the head is a title. Okay. Everything else, all of our paragraphs, all of our images, uh, all of our structural tags, they're all going in the body. Okay. A common mistake that I see people making early on is they put they put like a h1 tag inside of the head. Okay, an h1 tag, which we'll cover, all these other tags, it doesn't belong in the head. People get confused because h1 is called a heading tag. This is a heading. And it makes the text big and bold. Right, so an h1 makes the text big and bold and so because it's a, a what's called a heading tag, people get confused and they put it in the head section. Okay, but for right now, let's just keep the head section clean. The only thing we want in it is this title. Okay, so common mistake you should avoid. Do not put anything other than a title for right now inside of the head. That, that will change eventually, but it's a common mistake to put this up here. And you'll even see... Um, H1 is not permitted in head, right? You see that error message? Because of the extensions and the, the way we installed this software, we're able to get these error messages with that HTML validate as we, as we type. So we're getting validation messages as we, as we code, which is normally not something that happens. Again, if you come from a prior coding class, which by no means is that a prerequisite? But if you come from a prior coding class, you might be kind of used to getting error messages as you code. Um, historically, that was never the case with HTML. But again, because of the way we installed this software, there was a plugin called HTML Validate, and there was a, a node package that we installed. Uh, we're getting some live code editing as we go, um, and it's validating our code as we go. So now we can kind of get a real clean HTML document. And this is considered valid HTML. Am I going too fast? What do you guys think so far? It's been pretty good. So far, so good. John, you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. Have you uh, written HTML before, John? Uh, not just like in a coding camp, so. Okay. So this is the first time like with Visual Studio and that? Uh, I say Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code. Yeah, Visual Studio Code, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, again, I just want to make it clear that by no means is prior coding experience necessary, right? So, uh, Amel, have you ever dabbled with HTML? Mic check, one, two. Crystal, have you ever dabbled with HTML? Um, I have. Nice. A bit though, not much. Okay, cool. Does my mic work? Yeah, we hear you. Okay. And I was saying, uh, yeah, I touched HTML like back in 2008 for a semester, but that's about it. Okay. Uh, and George, you might have to type, or I'm not sure if you got that mic working. Or or John, no HTML. Cool. John, any any prior experience? Good to know my audience. <laughs> okay, very cool. Actually, John, I knew that. Obviously, I knew that. Um, okay, so Visual Studio is also pretty savvy. Uh, again, there's a lot of coding assistance. So if you have your file with an HTML extension, Okay, that's step one. If you have an HTML extension, 
Visual Studio has this plugin called Emmet. I'm going to look up E M M E T plugin. Let's see if I spelled that right. Yeah, I did. So Visual Studio comes with Emmet. And if I go to the Emmet documentation, let me uh, E M M E T cheat cheat. This is what I'm looking for. Um, there's a lot of hotkeys that can help you write HTML really fast. And so as you learn to write HTML, we can use this Emmet documentation to help us write um, HTML really fast. Like, you see this? It's kind of hard to see. Let me zoom in. Da, 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 da. OK. So notice here's one hotkey. The hotkey is the exclamation point. And all you have to do is type in exclamation point with an empty document and then hit the tab. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to type the exclamation point. And you can see that's an, an Emmet abbreviation. I'm going to hit tab. And it goes ahead and fills in a bare bones HTML document. We've got our doc type. We've got our HTML tag. we got our head tag, which actually has some extra meta tags. These meta tags, um, for right now, we'll learn about them and what they're used for. Just leave them in for now. And there's our title tag, and there's our body tag. And so we've covered all these tags except for the meta. Remember, I just call this extras, and we'll, we'll learn about these extras as we go. And so Emmett's pretty sweet. You know, we just start with an exclamation point, tab, and we get a bare bones template. And then we'll say, this is a web page. And I can go in the body, and I'll type in an H1. This is a H1 tag. So I get it. This is a web page. This is an H1 tag. Pretty cool. All right. And so what else is there? It says a simple HTML5 document. We, it does include the meta tag. So, um, what this does, again, this is telling the web browser, being probably Chrome, by the way, most web developers, um, you know, uh, dis have, a, have a historical dislike for Internet Explorer, so much so that they rebranded Internet Explorer and they now call it Edge. Edge is much better than Internet Explorer. However, for a long time, Google Chrome has been the browser of choice. And so if I look at kind of like the latest browser statistics, who's using what, um, still looks like Chrome is the dominant player in the game. Um, so if you don't use Chrome, I recommend it. Uh, it is by far the standard uh, browser of choice. Um, there are other heading tags. Let's look at that. You can see what they do. Now, I mentioned this earlier. This makes the font bold, right? So the font is bold inside of headings, and it does increase its size or decrease its size. So it, it does two things. It boldens the text. And as you might imagine, they just keep getting smaller. Kind of upside down. You go down, you go up in the numbers, and you get smaller in the text. Um, so let's talk about the purpose of these, because not only do they... It turns out the web gets a lot from um, newspapers. And so if you go to a gas station and you see a newspaper, right, what do they do to get your attention on, on a newspaper? They use, like, catchy headers, catchy titles. Okay, perfect. And of course, do they do that on the web, right? They don't uh, clickbait, right? So, yeah. But catchy titles, okay? So, so the words that they use are catchy and what you would call sticky, right? Um, but besides the words that they use, what else do they do with those words? A lot of times they're in like a big font. Yeah. And they're colorful. Yes. Controversial. 
big, yeah. bold, in your face, right? Yeah. Images, right? A car exploding, right? Something like that. Um, the big red arrow. <laughs> that's the point of an H1 tag. The H1 tag is supposed to be the attention getter. It's supposed to be a big tag kind of in your face. And probably it's even a little too small, right? For, for today's modern, like if you go back to msn.com, this is a news site. You know, eh, I guess there's not really too much bigger text than that. This ends like what about Yahoo? Don't they have? Yeah, it's about an H1, right? These are big H1s. Sometimes on a newspaper specifically, they they get the text gets a lot bigger, and you can make text bigger, right? Uh, but it's supposed to be an attention getter. Okay. Moving on to a paragraph tag. Now it's also kind of interesting. A lot of times I don't have anything to say. There's something called lorem ipsum, which is just Latin. And lorem ipsum, you type in the word lorem, and then you hit tab. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to, in between a paragraph, I'm going to type the word lorem. I'm going to hit tab. And it's basically going to give me content filler. And so this is basically a paragraph of Latin. And, you know, this is just content filler. Um, so I don't have to type it out myself. But that's exactly what a paragraph tag is used for, is it's used for um, multiple sentences. And there you go. That's your paragraph tag. And so we've now covered a simple HTML document. We've got headings. We've got paragraphs. We've got uh, HTML tag. That's your the buns of the burger. you got the heads, which are the extras. And you got the body, which is the meat. The meat, including the content itself, like the, the headings and the paragraphs and the, the nav bar and the structural tags like the header, the footer, the nav, so on and so forth. Um, most tags are, are standard opening and closing. So this H1 is the opening and closing tag. Um, there's also some tags like the image tag. Um, I can put an image in here that typically what you do is you put a forward slash, which means it's self-closing. So sometimes on an image tag, you'll see a forward slash at the end. That's, that's a self-closing tag. Or sometimes you'll see it left off. Now, of course, this little yellow says that you should consider putting that forward slash instead of leaving it off. So that's kind of mine. And um, this says that images also, you should have the alt tag. Let me show you what the alt tag is. Um, first off, how do you get an image tag on your page? So, um, if you right click an image, um, you can save an image. So by the way, for learning purposes, there's no legal problems with just ripping images off the internet and using them for learning. You know, if you put a page in production in the real world, then yeah, you just can't go ripping images off the internet. But let's go ahead and save this image, right? So I got a PNG, and I want to save it in the right location. And so I have this on my desktop, my repo, homework, chapter two, and this will be called fox.png. Okay, so getting it in the right folder is the first step in the battle. Now, as I type in the source, it's actually pretty smart, it finds it. And now I've got an image. Okay. Now it did mention this uh, source attribute. Um, let me explain the, the source. If I go to Fox 4 PNG, you notice I get this little broken image because I don't have the right file name. Right. What the source attribute is, is it does a couple things. This is an image of a fox. And uh, typically, what you're going to see, oh, I, I gosh darn it, not source, uh, alt. Now you get a little descriptor next to the broken image. At least if the image doesn't show, it'll show the alt attribute. But if I bring it back, it does not show the alt attribute. 
So basically it's there. If the image is not found, you're going to see the alt text. But if the image is found, it's there. Now it's also really useful, this alt attribute is really useful for screen readers. So obviously people who are blind, they can't see the image. And so a screen reader will read the alt text uh, to the person who cannot see the image, right? So alt text is really a good attribute. But let me rewind. I'm using this language attribute, and I didn't explain what an attribute is. So far, we know that this is a tag, an opening tag, and this is a closing tag. Together, when you have an opening and a closing tag, you get what's called an element. And actually, the content in between is all part of the element, right? So opening tag, closing tag, element. Okay, these are just, these are the terms of the language. Opening tag, closing tag, element. Attributes, this is your opening tag, the image opening tag, and then attributes here, you can actually see my screen, it's light blue. And what attributes do is they kind of modify how the tag works. This image tag has a source attribute kind of modifying the image tag to say, hey, load this picture. The picture is called fox.png. Okay, so the attributes, again, an important term, the attribute um, modifies the tag. Okay, this is the alt attribute. And the alt attribute, you know, says let's uh, let's use this for screen readers and let's um, let's put this text there if the image doesn't load for whatever reason. Okay, now you'll notice again um, you could call this an empty tag if you leave this off. That's often called an empty tag. If you put this on, you call it a self-closing tag. Both are valid and both are fine. Where did you put the fox.png file? Yeah, I put it inside the same folder that has the HTML file. So if I kind of navigate here, I put it right here. They're in the same folder. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and that's key because if, if this is not in the same folder, this is not going to work. You can get it to work if you do some things, but right now I'm just keeping it simple. Same folder. Okay, another empty tag is the line break. So, like for example, if I right now if I look at my page, I, you know, the fox is kind of close to that paragraph. If I put in a line break. Again, Visual Studio recommends self-closing tags versus empty tags. So this is a self-closing tag. Uh, you can see that kind of pushes the fox down a little bit. Okay, And actually, you don't want to do this too much because there's a better way. But now we've got a couple line breaks after the paragraph to push the fox down. Is that a default like space, or can you actually code in how much space you want with that break? Great question. So um, that is the default, and you can modify the default. Um, what we're really talking about when we start talking about moving things around on the page is positioning. And uh, we're going to learn to do positioning. Uh, but you actually do positioning with CSS. And so right now, we're kind of using this line break for positioning purposes, but we really don't want to do that. The better way is using another language called CSS. Because CSS, is, its whole purpose is for positioning. HTML is supposed to be for structure and for content. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Cool. You're going to notice that all my tags are lower cased. Um, in the old days of HTML, you would see people do this, and it hurts my eyes to have capitalized. This is not correct. Now, interestingly enough, it kind of still works. Actually, it does work. Even though you're not supposed to, in Visual Studio, because of this HTML validate, HTML students, you should write your tags in lowercase for what's, what's considered correct is all your tags are lowercase. There's no capital letters except for the doc type. Doc type's the one exception. And to be honest, I've been doing this for 20 years and it still throws me off to type the capital doc type. It still screws with me. 
Um, so all tags are lower cased. It's also true that if you put one tag inside of another tag, so for example, here's a body tag and we have an H1, this H1 needs to open and close before you close body. Okay, so this is called proper nesting. Okay, when you put tags inside of one another, in other words, I can open up what's called a span tag here, and I could put a few words inside of the span tag, but I open the paragraph, open the span, close the span, close the paragraph. I'm going to say format document with beautify, and that kind of formats this a little bit cleaner. Okay, again, I right click the document, format with beautify, and if I do that again, there's format document with, and if you want a default formatter, beautify. So now every time I just do right click format document, it'll use beautify. And I believe it just wants this to get rid of those yellow squigglies. It's not critical to get rid of yellow squigglies. Red squigglies are considered more, more of a problem. Yellow squigglies are a warning. Um, and this is just going to help you write clean HTML. So we covered nesting, we covered lowercase tags, we covered attributes. Attributes, again, um, modify how a tag works. So this is the anchor tag. Let me show you the anchor tag. So the anchor tag has an href attribute called page2.html. This is a link to another page. So now this one's interesting. So here's the anchor tag with an href attribute. We close the anchor, well, we don't close, We. this is the end of the opening tag. This is the blue text that you'll click, and then this is the end of the blue text, the end of the anchor tag. Right, this is a link to another page. You click on it, and it says it doesn't exist. Well, of course it doesn't exist, we haven't created it. But nonetheless, this is how you navigate from one page to another, is using the anchor tag, right? That was one of the beautiful things about uh, HTML and its invention is that websites and web pages could go from one page to another um, using these things called uh, hyperlink references. That's what href stands for. An anchor tag has a hyperlink reference to another page. Um, and this was one of the beauties of HTML, just that simplicity of being able to link from one page to another and if someone made a good page, then a lot of pe people will link to it, right? Um, so that's how you create links. I've already showed uh, the image tag. Keep in mind the alt attribute is um, always a good practice on your images. Okay, and um, I'll show you, um, there's another kind of attribute called a Boolean attribute. And this is an example. So this is input type of checkbox checked. Okay, so uh, if I do an input type of checkbox, okay, it's exactly what you might expect. And next to it, we could say uh, subscribe, right? So we got this subscribe checkbox, um, but its default behavior is to not be checked. And so there is a checked attribute that now when I load the page, it's default checked, okay? And so in, historically, you'd have to do this. Checked equals either, you would typically say checked equals checked, or you would say checked equals true. And these were both ways of doing that. And you'll notice it still works, even though Visual Studio barks at me. It still works. 
Um, but nowadays, you don't have to do that. You just make it a checked attribute, and it assumes checked equals true is really what it's doing. Because the default is false. So you just say checked is checked. And that's called a Boolean attribute. There's not a ton of those, but they do exist. Okay. Uh, I got 130. I'm going to pause the recording. And we are back from break and recording. So leaving off on the slideshow. Um, there's two attributes that are worth noting. Um, class and ID. So I'm going to kind of bring this back. And I'm just going to make three paragraph tags. And so this is called the ID attribute. The, the purpose of an ID, and this is, this is actually quite important, okay? The purpose of an ID attribute is to give a tag a unique identifier. I forgot my U. Unique. Um, even, even I misspelled identifier and it didn't like it. Very picky. That's good. <clears throat> um, so on the page, on the page. Okay, so this is our HTML page. If we had a second HTML, t uh, HTML page, it's not a unique identifier across pages, just on this page. You know, this is a first para, you know, this, this is a unique identifier for this page. Um, so it's on a per page basis. What this allows us to do Okay, so now we have three paragraphs. Of course, if we launch this page, we see three paragraphs. Now that this has an ID, um, and we're gonna learn some CSS. CSS is, um, you can, we're gonna learn the different ways to write CSS. Um, we can go inside of our CSS and we could target that ID and say color blue. So we match the ID, which is with this pound symbol. It says look for an ID called first paragraph and make the color blue. So now we've written CSS to change the color of that paragraph. Okay, and notice it did not change the other two. Okay, uh, there's also a class attribute. And the idea behind this, as you can kind of guess by the the purpose of the class attribute is to give a shared identifier on the page. Okay, and and uh, here we would in the CSS we target the class with a period. So you target the ID with the pound symbol, you target the class with the period, you say color purple, and uh, I'm going too fast. Oh, period, don't forget the name of it, shared para, color purple. Now it goes purple. So because classes can be shared your rule color you know will color both of those paragraphs and so ids can go in classes they can go on paragraphs they can go on headings you could put a class attribute on this and an id attribute on this they could go on like 
the header tag. You can put an ID on this, and you can put a class attribute on this. So you can put an ID in a class on just about any tag. Okay, so IDs question. and classes are pretty common. Was there a question in there? I heard. I thought I heard a microphone popping in. Yeah. Um, are IDs similar to variables, or no? No, I mean, I mean, uh, variables. You know, hold data. This is just. It's an identifier. It's like a name. You know, your your identifier is Vincent. Uh, I would, as you say, Botini, right? Did I get yeah. that right? Or did I butcher that? Yeah, that was right. That was right. All right. Yeah, it's just an identifier. It's just a name. Um, so variables have identifiers, right? You would say, you would say, uh, first name is your identifier. And so this, this, this identifier is first paragraph kind of thing. You're just giving it a name. I covered uh, comments. Um, was worth noting here is white space. So notice here, I, this simplifies a lot of it. Is this uh, this beautify? Uh, if you just click on format document, and keep in mind I already set that up to be with beautify. Um, it handles a lot of the white space, but like this this white space right here. This is a line break that I typed, but this does not change the way the page looks. Like I could add in a whole bunch of line breaks here and nothing changes here. Okay, uh, so white space largely is ignored and the way that we're gonna move things around is with CSS. We're gonna move things around on the page with CSS. And you can put a couple spaces here after the word first paragraph and, and see it doesn't even really matter. Right? Um, but there is something to be said for programming style. And what that, that is, is uh, this is pretty easy to read when you have nested tags that are tabbed over. So here you'll notice four spaces is a tab. And every time you're nesting tags inside of one another, you're tabbing them over. So there's a lot to be said for programming style. And that's what um, Beautify is. If you format document with Beautify, it kind of helps us get a constant style that makes our code easy, easy to read. Like, uh, for example, very hard to read code would be something like this. And even though this would be considered valid code, right? That's just side scrolling is a nightmare. No one likes, no one wants to do this, right? So instead you want to format your document with Beautify. And you can see there's a hotkey, Shift, Alt, and F. So if I hit Shift, Shift Alt, and S, there you go. And that just gets it nice and clean. Clean white space. Clean programming style. Um, next up, we do have uh, CSS. And so we're going to break down CSS in a lot more detail tomorrow. But I've kind of already showed you how to style uh, a paragraph with an ID and how to style a um, paragraph with a class. If you if you break these down, okay, what I what I did here is I wrote a selector. So the parts of a CSS rule are selector, property, and value. And so selector is what you see here. What does the selector do? Well, it's targeting the HTML. It's targeting the HTML with an ID of first para. So first para is this paragraph. So the selector's job is to target the HTML, to select the HTML, right? It makes sense. The selector targets the HTML, selects the HTML. The property is what you're changing. In this instance, the property is the color property, right? So this is the color property, colon, then the value is blue. So all of this together is called a CSS rule. So a rule consists of selector property value. Selector property value. Now you'll see here, they also have this term called declaration. The declaration is the property and the value together. So that's the declaration. It just 
uh, terms in the language to be familiar with. Now I wrote I wrote my CSS. Do you see where I wrote it? I wrote my CSS inside of a style tag inside of the head of the document. There's actually three places you can write CSS. One is where I wrote it. That's called embedded. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Just looking ahead. There's really not much left. Okay, we're almost done. I believe our next lecture is a whole lecture on CSS. Let me let me jump ahead and just look at tomorrow's lecture. I'm pretty sure tomorrow's lecture on chapter three is all over. Well, this is all more over HTML. So HTML, more about HTML tomorrow. And then it must be the next chapter where we focus CSS. Okay, good. So we definitely do a deeper dive on CSS um, in a couple of chapters. But for right now, CSS, you write what are called rules. In HTML, we have tags and tags composed together are called elements. In CSS, we have rules. Rules have selector property values. Tags have attributes. Um, We demonstrated how to select an ID and how to select a class. And brackets is uh, actually an, an old tool that we don't use anymore. That's our old editor. Uh, we now use Visual Studio Code. Yeah, brackets was one that I used a few years ago. Uh, brackets was a good tool used it for a couple of years and then the industry standard became uh, Visual Studio Code. So Brackets has an extension manager. There's code hints in Brackets just like there is in Visual Studio Code. Um, you know there's common mistakes in HTML that you can make. Uh, you know you open an H1 and you don't close it. You don't spell something properly. You know, for example, I, I made this mistake, right? I, I left the selector empty. Like that was super common. I just I just typed too fast and I forgot to type the selector. Um, so this is our selector. Curly braces. Don't forget the closing curly braces. So every opening. Um, you can also do font size. So you could do something like 30 pixels. So the first paragraph increases the font size. And so this is how your, your CSS uh, rules, now there's more than one, right? So the color goes blue, the font size 30 pixels, right? And that makes that, that paragraph bigger. Um, but the point is selector curly braces, property colon value, property colon value. Am I right in thinking that uh, you can call that selector uh, up there, even though you kind of gave the identifier below? Yeah, so you created the identifier below, and then you um, you basically use the same identifier here. Um, so they, they basically they have to match is is really what it gets down and what it boils down to. Well, I was thinking just a more like in terms of. Uh, like scope and C sharp, how you know if, if you declare something below, unless you're passing that value, you're not going to be able to call it up above. You know what I mean? Yeah, but no, this this is fine. The, the way this works, you can you can call it here and you know so so to speak, create declare it here and it works fine. So yeah, if you don't have the braces paired correctly, if you're missing semicolons, like if I leave that semicolon off. You know, so, thankfully we, we've got some validators going on that says, hey, this doesn't even look right. But if you were to open this up, notice it doesn't have either. It doesn't have the color blue or the paragraph size 
sizing correct, all because I forgot that semicolon. Uh, I got a syntax question. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, it's a convention thing. Um, you did first para, and you did like lowercase f, capital P. Is the syntax or the convention the same as C sharp? Um. Yes, camel casing is basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, do we? Is there ever a time where we we will use like Pascal casing or anything else in this? You may, and that's that's not as strict of a, a thing here. Um, if that makes sense. Yep. I think companies might do this differently. Each company will do it differently, but. I, I'll follow the syntax myself. So most of my students follow the syntax, which means lowercase first letter, every new word is capitalized. Okay, the rest of this is basically stuff I've shown already. I uh, just sh was showing how to do it. Now, um, there is a tool online to validate your code. Now, thankfully, we've been validating our code as we go because of the extensions that we've added and that HTML validator tool. Um, we've been validating our code as we go. However, there is an online validator. Um, this is not it. Isn't that tricky? HTML5 validator, and it's, this is URL? No, no, no. This is our validator.w3.org and we're going to click on this tab to validate by file upload. Let's choose our file and we're going to click our HTML file here inside of the homework chapter 2. Click on check and it says bad value ID for header and you can see my header has an ID that's empty so it doesn't like that. So I'm going to take that off I'm going to assume it's not going to like my empty class either. And then I'm going to choose that file again. And click on check. Now when you get the green, that means you have no errors. There are a lot of benefits to validating your code and writing valid code. The, the main benefit is um, when you write valid HTML, um, Google is going to understand the content that's on your page. When Google can understand the content that's on your page, it can then refer people to your page. Um, and Google, if, if it's a good page and has good content and has valid HTML, um, you know, you're much more likely to get um, Google to recommend your page if it's valid. Um, your page will also load faster. So there are just a lot of benefits to writing valid HTML. As I've already demonstrated a couple different ways, sometimes your HTML can be written and not valid. Like this, right? This is actually going to, the browser is smart enough that it'll still show the header tag. Like it doesn't break. In a lot of cases, things won't break, and the page will look how you want it to look, even though this is not considered correct. And when you're not writing valid HTML, again, it might not load as fast. Why? Why won't it load as fast? Well, the web browser itself will have to take the invalid code and fix it for you. And that fixing process slows down your web page loading time. So you want to write valid code, and you want to double check it in the validator. And this is the tool to do that. You're looking for this right here. And of course, as part of learning to write code, I, I'll you know give you a fores foreshadowing on this test. You know, uh, I am going to be asking that you validate your code, um, you know, on the hands-on test. And so as we do our labs. Uh, you know, we will be validating our web pages, and that will be something I ask you to do on the hands on test. All right, 
That lecture is winding down. Any other final questions? That was an hour and 10 minutes. Any questions before I stop the recording on chapter two? Kind of wide open. Nope. Okay, I'll stop the recording.